Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Another sunny day ruined by the bitter cold. With spring less than a week away, will we see any warm up? But we begin with breaking news. We are just a few minutes away from President Donald Trump's arrival here in Metro Detroit. This is video from the president taking off from Washington just about an hour ago. We will have live coverage from Metro Airport as soon as Air Force One lands. The president is expected to discuss fuel emission standards with top automotive leaders during his visit today. And our Rod Maloney joins us live inside of the American Center for Mobility there in Ypsilanti, where the president will speak this afternoon. And Rod, I see that you had a chance to speak to some of the automakers and folks that work for these auto companies uh, there to hear from the president today. That's right, Rhonda. You know, we're here. It's actually an airplane hangar out here at Willow Run. They used to make the old Super Fortress airplane, the B-29, uh, here years and years ago. Now they use it as an, uh, an airplane hangar. Uh, and you see behind me a couple of hundred uh, auto workers from each of the domestic three automakers here. They brought in many buses full of, uh, of plant workers, of white collar workers and the like. And uh, they are here to hear the president speak uh, after his meetings with the governor and also with uh, the domestic three CEOs, plus some other auto executives from uh, the Japanese automakers. One of the things that General Motors did today was announce a, a jobs move, uh, adding some jobs and shuffling around some others. We'll run you through that quickly. Uh, the Romulus powertrain plant is going to get 220 new jobs because they're going to have, be working on the new 10-speed automatic transmission for vehicles like the Camaro ZL1 hot-selling car and uh, they need uh, more people to build more transmissions there. That's good news. Also in Flint, um, they're going to be uh, adding, they're going to be retaining rather 180 jobs. Uh, those people are going to be moving over from the Lansing Delta Township plant uh, where they're going to be working now on the Silverado and Sierra HD. You'll remember that the Lansing Delta Township plant cut its third shift because they were eliminating one of the vehicles. They are moving one of the vehicles out of Lansing Delta Township down to Spring Hill, Tennessee. And so now what they're going to do is they're going to retain another 500 jobs there at Lansing Delta Township uh, as they go to work on the new Travers and Buick Enclave. The Acadia is going to be moving down to Spring Hill. So those are a number of the job changes that GM announced today. A few added jobs and a few shuffled around. Uh, but they're also going to be talking about the notion that they can have more jobs in the future, talking about cafe standards and the like. That's, that means the fuel efficiency standards, which President Donald Trump, we are told, is going to be uh, going to look at cutting. Uh, at least that's the expectation as they go for the midterm review, the midterm review that the Obama administration decided not to do as, uh, the, as the clock wound down on that administration. Let's hear now from some of the auto workers who are here today and what their expectations are from what the president's going to be talking about. I'm not a Trump supporter. I did not vote for Trump, but I thought the opportunity to just see in person uh, who was making the decisions for our country and get a better view, not that I don't already have a great one, but get a better view in person of who he is. I'm expecting to hear some relief on the mileage standards. I suspect that's the way he's going to push. All right, so the president's plane is about to land, we're told, about 12.15 at uh, Metro Airport. He's going to be then taking the motorcade over here to Willow Run, just down the street. He has lots of meetings with the governor, with the mayor of Flint. He's going to be meeting with the, the domestic three CEOs and speaking here uh, about 2.20 in the afternoon. So we're going to be here. We'll have full coverage. We'll be talking to the people who are going to be here listening to him, and we'll have the full coverage at 4, 5, and 6. So reporting live from Willow Run, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, Rod, looking forward to your coverage. Thank you. And ahead of the president's visit, he took to Twitter. President Trump sent out a tweet this morning about his love for Michigan and the city of Detroit. It reads, we'll be going to Detroit, Michigan love today for a big meeting on bringing back car production to state and U.S. already happening. Again, the president is expected to deliver remarks at the American Center of Mobility, where our Rod Maloney is, at 2.20 this afternoon. And you can watch Local 4 and also 
have it streaming on our website at clickondetroit.com as well so that you can listen in. Meanwhile, this afternoon, Flint Mayor Karen Weaver is going to be meeting with President Trump. The Flint Mayor announced this morning that she accepted an invitation to meet with the President to discuss the city's ongoing water crisis. The President is also expected to meet with Governor Snyder during his visit here to Metro Detroit as well. In the meantime, it's a very chilly greeting for the President. Hope he has a warm coat, Brandon. Where am I? The North Pole when he gets out. But uh, yeah, it is really tough to warm up out there. I've seen folks out wearing thicker garb than they probably have all year. Mid-March should not be this cold, but yet here we are in the low 20s. A few areas like Metro Airport and Romulus 25, Monroe at 24. You can ignore those temperatures because of these winds that are blowing pretty consistent at about 20. And these are gusts out of the northwest. You can see Ann Arbor 30 mile an hour gust, Pontiac 31, insult to injury. The wind chill is what we need to pay attention to outside, certainly on exposed skin, the cheeks, the ears, the hands. We want to cover up in layers. We have single digit numbers everywhere. Port Huron, Pontiac feel like six. Ann Arbor feels like seven right now out near uh, Ypsilanti. So it will be very chilly for the president and for all of you, no matter what your afternoon plans are. Those winds will be relentless through the afternoon, even though we've got the bright sunshine, Rhonda. We do have warmer days in the seven day. We look forward to hearing more about that, Brandon. Thank you. Later today, FBI Director James Comey is expected to confirm whether or not the intelligence organization is investigating possible links between Russia and Donald Trump's election campaign. Meantime, the U.S. Justice Department has just announced that two Russian intel officers and two criminal hackers have been indicted in the massive Yahoo hack. One of the defendants has been taken into custody in Canada. Another is on the list of the FBI's most wanted cyber criminals. The charges arise from a compromise, uh, compromise of Yahoo users' accounts that began at least as early as 2014, though the Justice Department has previously charged Russian hackers with cybercrime. This would be the the first criminal case brought against Russian government officials. DTE is still working to restore power to about 2,000 more customers. This morning, DTE said that it has restored to nearly all of the 800,000 customers that lost power during last Wednesday's windstorm. About 2,000 customers, though, still remain without power on now day seven. DTE says those customers are the top priority and hope to have all restored as soon as possible. Quite sure those customers feel the same way. The annual Stars and Stripes Festival has a new home after deciding to leave Macomb County for the first time in its 11 year history. This this year, the Stars and Stripes Festival will be held at the Suburban Collection Showplace in Novi. The festival has been held in Macomb County for the past 10 years, but was forced out of its most recent venue, Freedom Hill, due to a disagreement with the owner. This year's festival starts on June 29th. No matter where it is, it'll be fun for the whole family. And still ahead here on your Wednesday, a police officer is rescued at a McDonald's drive through New at noon, the new video showing McDonald's worker jumping through the window to save the unconscious officer. And millions digging out this afternoon after that massive snowstorm dumps more than 30 inches of snow in parts of the Northeast. How states are dealing with the aftermath next. During Welcome back, everybody. Millions from Washington, D.C. all the way north to Maine are digging out after Tuesday's powerful nor'easter. The winter storm made it nearly impossible to travel on the roads in several states. NBC's Miguel Almaguer is in Massachusetts. Gabe Gutierrez covering the storm from LaGuardia Airport in New York City. I'm Miguel Almaguer in Worcester, Massachusetts, where folks are waking up and digging out. Upwards of 14 to 15 inches of snow fell all across this area. This is what they're looking at here, and it's not just the snow. Over the last 24 hours, we had winds upwards of 80 miles an hour all across this region. The coast was also battered with powerful winds, and when people pull out of their driveways today, these are the conditions they face. Incredibly slick and dangerous roads. It's going to be a long day all across this region. Now to my colleague Gabe Gutierrez at LaGuardia. 
Virtually no lines so far here at New York's LaGuardia Airport as this airport struggles to get back up and running. The airlines scrambling to rebook their passengers that were stranded by yesterday's winter storm. More than 6,200 flights were canceled yesterday already. So far today, more than 1,000 flights have been canceled across the country. The airports mostly impacted, of course, are those in the Northeast, the New York City airports, as well as Boston and Baltimore. Now, public transportation is mostly back up and running. Amtrak is running on modified service. But if you don't have a flight already booked today, chances are you're, you're out of luck. It could be several days before the airlines clear this backlog. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, New York. Mm, a huge inconvenience for a lot of people. Well, a Florida McDonald's employee hailed a hero for quick thinking. Take a look at what unfolded here. It all happened at a drive through in Doral. This is near Miami, and you're looking at surveillance video of the incident from inside of the McDonald's. 22-year-old Pedro Valoria was working that drive through when an off-duty Miami-Dade officer pulled through with her kids. She was having a medical emergency. You saw that he didn't hesitate, jumped right out of the window, running to her car. It is what a hero does. If, if I would have need to die to save that woman, I would have done it. I thought if these kids lose their mother today, that's going to be tragic. It certainly would be thankful for his quick thinking. The woman was taken to an area hospital where she is now listed in critical condition. It's unclear what her medical emergency was, but certainly probably thankful that Pedro jumped into action so quickly. He's known as the BBC dad <laughs> in a video seen by millions. Now this professor talks about the blooper that quickly made him and his family famous. Brandon, it's so cute. It is. <laughs> well, we've got some snow here showing up in blue. When it's green, it's rain. Just in time for St. Patrick's Day. Next. Millions of dollars were donated to help families coping with the Flint water crisis. Now we're following the money. Yes. In your toes. Okay. As many as 12,000 children exposed to lead potentially facing lifelong health and behavior problems. Your donations being used for programs to help them have a better future. We want these parents to have a chance as well. If we didn't have this in our community, I believe it would be more women wandering the streets during the day. We take you inside a program focused on the children and their parents. You'll see how it's helping tonight at 11. We're concerned. If you Welcome back, everybody. Time is running out for you to vote for a very special couple here locally looking to go on the adventure of a lifetime. Their names are Nino and Marie Piccini from Gross Point, and they are all of us on social media and do more daily than probably most of us. They are well known for their fit lifestyles, volunteer work, and their knack for adventure. And they need your help as they are one of 200 entries in the Lighthouse for the Blind Adventure Contest. If selected, they'll get, a, they'll get to fulfill a, a dream adventure. We will take our triple bike or two tandems and a sighted friend or two and ride across Europe. We want to experience Europe on a bicycle. The culture, the food, all of it. Ah. You and me both. To vote, just go on over to the Scene on 4 tab of ClickOnDetroit.com. You have to like their YouTube video using your YouTube account, but if you don't have one and you have a Gmail password, you can use that. Voting continues all the way up until 3 o'clock this afternoon. And Brandon knows the couple personally, so I know you cast your vote. Yeah, they go to the same gym, Point Fitness, that I do. I, I just started. So don't laugh. Well, at least you're going. Uh, but they teach a spinning class. Oh, wow. Nobody can keep up with these folks. They're <laughs> incredible. And the volunteer work that they do with the uh, Department of Ophthalmology, teaching those who are losing their sight or lose their sight late in age how to adapt, Aww. how to gear up for that and, and what to do. And so they do a ton of work in the community. And again, they I just urge this. you, yeah, to vote. They're in second place, and we've only got about two and a half hours left. So again, Again, the scene on four tab of clickondetroit.com and uh, you will see their story. You have a there's a little area where you can go vote and you just hit the little thumbs up like button.
It's all you got to do and then share it on your Facebook. Come on, let's get it out there. 25 degrees out there right now. Northwest winds 18. 11 is the wind chill and this is the warmest number that we have anywhere in the viewing area. So everybody else seeing wind chills in the single digits, dangerous frostbite kind of stuff and the sun is out, so it may trick you a little bit, but as soon as you step out there, you know you need the layers and everything covered up. Look at the winds gusting. We mentioned the 18 mile an hour sustained wind, but gusting 31 miles an hour in Pontiac, 30 over in Ann Arbor, also 30 up in Flint City Airport right there, and we'll see some gusts occasionally 30 to 35. Not constant, but it just whips you right in the face. Ugh, it's tough to stay warm out there. Bottom line, 28 degrees, feeling much colder than that. Get a few more clouds later in the afternoon. No, we don't have snow. Forgot to take the little snow layer off there, but clear skies tonight, 19 degrees. It'll be wind chilly in the evening hours, but calming as we head through the overnight. As far as the winds go, they'll be a lot lighter on your Thursday, and we still have plenty of sunshine. No more great lake effect moisture affecting uh, parts of southeastern lower, but if you're driving over the Blue Water Bridge, the London area getting some snow pockets there, and it's a lot heavier. Anybody driving towards Chicago? Chicago Southwestern, just a thin stripe coming down here, but that can be absolutely critical on the road. So we watch that big nor'easter is wrapping up to the east, and now we watch this system that's coming in on St. Patrick's Day on Friday. So enjoy tomorrow. Lighter winds, 37 degrees on Friday, probably mid morning, maybe closer to lunch that we get a little wintry mix sleep snow, rain, all possibilities. If it's all snow in some spots, maybe a quick inch and then near 40 degrees, which brings the better threat for rain. That'll be green on the radar for St. Patrick's Day and uh, back to some light snow Friday night, early Saturday. But Rhonda, it looks like the weekend is dry and just a slow warm up. All right, it sounds like you're working on your Irish accent, so I'm looking forward to that, Brandon. Meanwhile, a professor whose interview with the BBC went viral after his two kids, well, they interrupted him during his Skype interview uh, as he speaks out about the incident that led to an unexpected internet fame. Speaking to the BBC again from his home in Seoul, the international relations professor was joined by his wife and adorable kids for a second less chaotic interview. Hey. A lot of people I think didn't know this, but the Skype has, you know, Skype has a picture in picture. So I was actually able to see as soon as Yana walked in the door. Um, I was actually cued to it. And so I was just hoping that my wife would eventually see it and maybe find some way to sort of run them out of the room. He says once his son barged in, there was just nothing that he could do to stop the chaos. And he was hoping that the BBC would just simply cut the interview altogether. But it's a great video to see the whole family come pouring in. Still ahead, a four-year-old West Michigan girl gets a day that she will never forget. Next at noon, how her love for police officers earned her a special award. Replay songs. Well, welcome back, everybody. We continue to follow breaking news out of Metro Airport, where right now we are watching Air Force One come in for a landing out at Metro Airport. We understand Air Force One is now on the ground. President Trump arriving here to speak to automakers and he'll be speaking out of a plant, an automotive uh, automobility plant called American Center for Automobility in Ypsilanti. He's scheduled to speak there at two o'clock this afternoon to automakers. So we will be covering his visit. Rod Maloney is there, so he'll be keeping us updated on what the president is going to be speaking about. But we're hearing that fuel economy standards is going to be one of the things that's talked about a lot of the automakers very concerned about the standard that's supposed to be up to about 50 miles per gallon by 2025. And so they're hoping to get a little break. So you going to mention his tax return? Or <laughs> we probably doesn't want to talk about right. that. Thanks for being with us, everybody. We'll have much more on the president's tonight.